everything that we have thought to this period. We also know that everything we are or ever will become will come as a result of the content of our minds, that we do not achieve our destinies or realize our futures through physical effort at all. It's always through what we do with our minds. And that everything that we do to improve the quality of our thinking must, by extension, improve the quality of our lives. So let's just briefly recap some of the mental laws that we have talked about up to now and then mention two more plus two factors which are critically important to reprogramming our minds. The first law was the law of belief that simply said that whatever we believe with feeling becomes our reality. That if we wish to change our realities, we must change our beliefs about ourselves in relation to reality. That if we have self-limiting beliefs, they come true for us irrespective of whether or not they are based on fact or fiction. The second law that we talked about was the law of expectation that says whatever we expect with confidence becomes our own self-fulfilling prophecy. And that's why it is absolutely essential that we continually expect the best of ourselves and expect the best of every situation. We find that the most successful men and women make a habit of developing positive self-expectancy. They are continually manufacturing their own expectations to keep themselves positive and to keep their self-fulfilling prophecies consistent with what they want to accomplish rather than with what they fear. The third law that we talked about is the law of attraction that says that we inevitably attract into our lives the people and circumstances that harmonize with our dominant thoughts. And that if we want to attract different people and different circumstances, we have to change our thinking. That our thoughts are like a form of electromagnetic energy that radiate out from us and that attract back to us like a magnet those people and those circumstances that harmonize with them. The third law that we talked about is the law of concentration. Now, concentration is extremely important. It says that whatever you dwell upon in the conscious mind grows in your experience. It's as though your thoughts were watered and fertilized by continual concentration. If you want to grow a plant, it requires fertilizer, water, and nutrition, and weeding. If you want to grow something in your life, it requires concentrating on that thought or picture until it comes into your reality. The next law that we talked about is the law of substitution, which says that the conscious mind can only hold one thought at a time either positive or negative. If we wish to have positive experiences in our lives, we have to keep our conscious mind focused on positive things, positive events, positive circumstances. In James Allen's wonderful book, As a Man Thinketh, he says that the mind is very much like a garden. And like a garden, either weeds or flowers will grow. But if you do not deliberately and consciously and purposefully plant flowers, weeds will grow automatically. Weeds do not need any encouragement. Weeds do not need any nutrition. They do not need any fertilizer. They do not even need weeding, if you like. Weeds just grow automatically, which is to say that our minds will tend to be occupied with worries and fears and anxieties unless we consciously and deliberately fill them with thoughts. Like a vacuum, the mind will not remain empty for any period of time unless we consciously fill them with thoughts consistent with the people that we want to be, with the characteristics and attributes that we want to have, then what we'll have is weeds. And the reason why most people are so unhappy in life is that their minds are full of weeds. It's as simple as that. The two factors that are important are thought and feeling. Feeling is, if you like, the activating process of mind. That each thought that we wish to bring into our reality must be charged or activated by an emotion an emotion of desire, an emotion of love, an emotion of excitement. But a thought without a feeling does not generate a reaction in our lives. A feeling without a thought does not generate a direction. So thought and feeling must be mixed. The next law is what we call the law of practice or the law of repetition. We know that if we wish to develop a motor skill or a mechanical skill, if we wish to learn how to type or to play tennis or to ski or to do anything that requires our physical body. In order to do it, we have to first learn the skill, and then we have to practice it over and over and over again until it becomes automatic. Every single attitude or thought or value that we have is a habit pattern of thought, either positive or negative. And if we wish to change from negative habit patterns to positive habit patterns, 
we have to practice the positive ones over and over again. If we wish to see ourselves and think about ourselves as positive, constructive, achievement-oriented, forward-looking individuals, we have to think about ourselves and dwell on ourselves as being that type of person all the time. By doing that over and over again, that's how we practice until it becomes a habit. Positive people do not have to remind themselves to be positive when they get up in the morning. Positive people are positive because they have thought positively for so long, it's a natural habit for them to be positive. It's a habit for them to be optimistic. It's a habit for them to look for the good in each situation. It's a habit for them to respond positively to other people. They don't have to make any effort. They have done it over and over again until it is an automatic response. And our entire future is dependent upon the habits we form, especially the habit patterns of mind. As they say, form good habits and make them your masters. And finally, the law of relaxation. The law of relaxation says, quite simply, that in all mental working, effort defeats itself. Now, in physical working, if we wish to chop a piece of wood or hammer a nail into a block of wood, the harder we hit, the faster we chop the wood, the faster we drive the nail in. So we know that in the physical world, the more exertion we put in, the harder we work, the more we put our shoulder to it, the better results we get. In the mental world, though, it is exactly the opposite, and this is an absolutely critical distinction. It is the harder that we don't try, the faster our minds change and we become the people that we want to become. The more we just relax and confidently believe and expect that the things that we want will come into our life when we are ready for them, the more rapidly they come in. The harder we work, the harder we push, the less success we have. And if we try to make things happen out of their due time, invariably we precipitate a crisis in our lives. If we try to make things happen too fast or too slow, especially in mental working, we will cause enormous stress and chaos in our lives. So the answer is just to relax, to confidently believe, to think about, to concentrate on what we want to happen, to keep our minds focused on where we want to go, and just confidently expect that exactly when we are ready, what we want will come to us.